What's the word, y'all? The Dallas Mavericks just lost back-to-back -back games to the Charlotte Hornets. And the Charlotte Hornets, of course, don't have LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier, Kelly Oubre. I mean, you can argue, even if they did have all of those three players, a loss like this two times in a row is unexcusable. Inex inexcus inexcusable. And they still did it. And, and, and man, oh, man, the, the Dallas Mavericks was from a team that people were super excited about going into the season to a team that's on the outside looking in. And I do want to express how bad it is to have a guy of Luka Doncic's talent on your roster and be on the outside looking in. As of right now, the way the NBA goes, two-thirds of the teams are in. You have Luka Doncic, one of the best players in all of basketball, and you are on the outside after doing your version of buying at the deadline. Now, the NBA is ever-evolving. They got seven games left this season, and they're only one game out from being in but even just being in for this team is not good enough. Remember, this is a team that went to the conference finals last year. It's a lot to talk about. But before we do that, let me tell you about our sponsor, Prize Picks. Hit the link in the description, download the Prize Picks app, and use code Kenny. Use that code, they're matching your deposit up to $100. I like Prize Picks because it's just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite or least favorite players. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You look at the number, and you decide if you think the athlete is going to have more or less than that number. And creating entries are extremely fast. The entry you see right here was put together in a matter of 15 seconds. Basketball, football, baseball, college hoops, League of Legends, uh, Counter-Strike. I'm just naming some of the sports that are on there for prize picks, so it's not just hoop. The baseball season around the corner, y'all, and best believe Kenny Beecham is going to be playing some prize picks. So hit the link in the description, download the prize picks app, and use code Kenny so they can match your deposit up to $100. All right, all right, all right. There, there, there are so many places we can start off with, but I, I think it, it boils down to this offseason. I think we had to start this off in the offseason, right? Uh, because this offseason was an eventful one for the Dallas Mavericks. Remember, this is a team that, that made the conference finals last season. And if they miss the playoffs completely, they'll be, what, one of three teams, I think I read, since the 80s to go from a conference finalist to missing the playoffs completely. And the other teams that did that either had, like, a major injury or a major trade in the offseason where they broke some things down. The, the Dallas Mavericks, yeah, they did have a major trade, but it was for, for the buying. So this offseason was super important. Luka Doncic was there, and a fuel to the fire. We are here. We, we're ready to make some noise. And I look at that, that, that run for them, the conference finals run, similarly to the one that the Portland Trailblazers put together a few years ago, or the Denver Nuggets put together in the bubble, where like these are teams that, of course, had a lot of talent, but I didn't really see them as a team that, that was really a contender, but they made it all the way to the conference finals because they, they had a really good run. Even going into the season, if you go look at my, my preseason videos, I was telling y'all that I would be very hesitant to say that the Dallas Mavericks are going to be back in contention or close to contention because I I didn't like their roster. A part of that was losing Jalen Brunson. Now I didn't even know. I don't think many people saw Jalen Brunson to, to blossom into the player he is right now. Where though he was not an All Star, he's as close to an All Star as you could be without being an All Star. And once All NBA comes around, he's gonna be on some. He probably won't make the whole team, but some All NBA ballots. I don't think a lot of people expected that. But I I, I know we all watched them in the playoffs last season when Luka Doncic was injured and, and just saw how good Jalen Brunson can be. Now you might have saw the sample size too little, and he is showing that boom. If I get the minutes and the opportunity that I could be like that. And well, they didn't, uh, they didn't do anything to supplement that. Uh, this offseason, they traded a late first round pick for Christian Wood, who is already in his career, had a lot of conversations around the idea. And I'm just going to put this quotation marks because I don't even know if I subscribe to this idea of empty stats, empty calories, big, where he can score a lot of points, but he's given up a lot on the other side. And you saw throughout the course of the season, he went from a guy that had some trust from, from Jason Kidd to almost no trust to Jason Kidd to right now. I, I don't even know where he stands because in this game that we watched against the Charlotte Hornets, unfortunately for the Dallas Mavericks, it was the only NBA game on. Of course, there's some March Madness stuff going on, but it was the only NBA game on that early. So a lot of people tuned in and they got dominated in the paint. You're, you're Jason Kidd, who has got his reputation as a coach of being a defensive coach. I mean, that anchor, the, the preventing the easiest shot of basketball is kind of important to him. And that's why Christian Woods minutes have been fluctuating all season long. Anyway, there are a couple games over 500 um, and then Kyrie Irving requested a trade. And they threw their name into the, to the hat, and they ended up with Kyrie Irving. Boom. Now we got one of the most talented backcourts in all of basketball, arguably the most talented backcourt in all of basketball. And I, I think they're the three and eight together. It hasn't looked good. Yep, it, ha it hasn't looked good at all. We're in this game against the Charlotte, remember this, against the Charlotte Hornets. 
Luca put up 40 points in 40 minutes and they, they lost. They had a couple runs to make it interesting, but I think they were down by like 20 plus points at one point this game. And I think the last game that they lost to them, a couple days before that, the Charlotte Hornets were on the second day of a back-to-back. -back. Like, the, like the Hornets are one of the worst teams in basketball by design. They're, they're trying to do what they could do to get their first overall pick to help LaMelo Ball once he comes back from his injury. They're bad on purpose. They're trying to lose. And you lost two games in a matter of three, four days to them. And then we get these, these interviews, these post-game interviews with Lucas saying he's dealing with stuff off the court that's kind of taking the enjoyment away from the stuff that's going on the court. And they're just losing games. Overall, the state of the Dallas Mavericks is extremely bad. They lost the game to the Golden State Warriors. And Mark Cuban is going to foul that report to try to re get it turned around because of the thing with the ref, whatever, whatever. Question authority. He wore the shirt that said question authority. Maybe question the, the team building over there. Um, Mr. Cuban, because uh, when we look back on the Kyrie Irving trade, the main thing everybody was saying, is, I don't know how they're going to stop nobody. I, I just don't I just don't know how they're going to stop people. And if you have a game like tonight where you can't stop people and you don't get any production outside of in, anybody not named Luka Doncic, you have a 0% chance of winning games. In the previous year, their identity was, hey, we are a top five defense. We might not feel like it because we got Luka Doncic carrying him, but we were a top five defense last season, y'all. All of that is gone. And they're a identity-less team right now with seven games left in the season. Not a place you really want to be. Even if they do end up making the plan, which again, when you have Luka Doncic carry Irvin, I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say you can win a couple of the last seven games while some of the other teams around you are falling and say that you make the play-in. But if you make the play-in, there's obviously a ceiling on what's going on. And I don't know, come off-season, what you do to make this team better. And that is the scariest part of it all. Because you have Luka Doncic, who's one of the best players of basketball at the young age of 23. I'm just going to say, I'm not Googling it. And, and you don't have... A, a legit way to make it all better. Think about Kyrie Irving, you because you think to yourself, okay, the parent only had 17 games to get it working, and they were bad in that 17. But if they had a full off season to ramp it up, they're gonna be good next season. Okay, go ahead and get Kyrie Irving that money. What else are we doing? How are you gonna get people that's gonna stay in front of their defender? It's it's something I don't envy the person they gotta make the decision. I'm glad it's not me. Maybe I shouldn't be glad it's not me. I, I think those people make a lot of money. Um, and even if the, the lifespan of that job is not super long, at least you've got a guaranteed contract. I don't know. There's so many more things that could be said about this. I'm just going to wait and see. Let me look at what the remainder of the schedule looked like. I know it's seven games, but according to Takeathon, the Dallas Mavericks have the 17th hardest schedule left in basketball. They have games against the Bulls, the Hawks, the Pacers, and the Spurs, but they also have games against the 76ers um, and the Kings. And remember, the Dallas Mavericks don't stop anybody. And those are two of the top offenses in basketball, so good luck. What else is going on around the league? LeBron James came back. I got the tweet, like everybody else, the post notice saying that LeBron James is upgraded from doubtful to questionable. The later turn from questionable to game time decision. And it went from game time decision that he's he, he coming off the bench, y'all. Against my Bulls. The Bulls are in LA on their West Coast road trip. And LeBron James is coming back. And I'm like, man, my Bulls are finally playing good basketball at the 50 plus, 50 plus games of them being bad. They're finally hitting a little stride right now. LeBron will come back and ruin all of that. Uh, he didn't. Uh, the, 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 the Bulls took care of business. I don't know why it took 50 plus games for the Bulls to make it make sense. It legitimately, like, the only other thing I could think of is that it is the Patrick Beverly effect. And I didn't expect the guy that averaged just seven points on the year to have so much of an impact in the locker room. He told Zach Levine, I just want you to shoot the ball. And Zach Levine is averaging 30 points per game on 50, 40, 90 since, since Patrick Beverly told him to do that. You know what I'm saying? The team has already been a good defense all season long, but now we're one of the better ones. I think we were seven before Patrick Beverly got there. Last time I checked, we were number five. And if the offense could come around like today where they were hitting shots... Uh, they're a competent NBA team, and it took 50 plus ga 60 plus games to get here. It makes no sense. I was disappointed. I mean, Anthony Davis today. I would be uh, disappointed, in Anthony Davis. I was a Lakers fan because Vucevic gets ejected on some BS. I'm just gonna say that. And somehow Anthony Davis still ends up with nine total field goal attempts when he's getting, being guarded by Derrick Jones Jr., who though he seemed like he's a four, he's six five. Like he's bouncy as all heck, but he's only six five. He's the same height as Alex Caruso, Anthony. 
I ain't complaining though. It was against my team. That he ain't do nothing. So I'll take that. But you want Anthony Davis to be way more aggressive when you see that the starting center of the opposing team gets uh, gets ejected, especially since the Bulls don't have another center outside of Drummond. We released Tony Bradley. Like it's Drummond or it's Derrick Jones Jr. And it worked. Shout out to the Bulls. Uh, the longest road win streak for the Bulls since Derrick Rose's MVP season, which is crazy to really think about. I got a whole video coming out about the Trailblazers probably tomorrow, so uh, be tuned in to that one. Um, it got some positives and some negatives about this season, obviously with Damian Lillard basically being shut down as of right now. I got some, some, some thoughts that's going in my head. The Minnesota Timberwolves, y'all, went to... to Chase Center, because I always be getting it mixed up. Went to Chase Center and got a win. Carthy Towns is coming back. because looked pretty solid, man. Hit both games that they won. Big free throws and then big three in transition. One of those, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you crazy mofo. You hit the shot. One of those moments for Carthy Towns. Um, so I, I'm just excited for them because they, they play together. Finally, their big three play together for the first time in, since November. And though they went almost 10 minutes without a field goal, the defense was good enough against the Warriors to prevent them from getting 100 points, which you take. Now, of course, you want the offense to look a lot better, but you you take a win like this this late in the season for sure. So with everything that happened today, the Timberwolves are now the seventh seed on your half game away from the Warriors, who they just beat. I don't know why I don't be showing y'all my screen when I'm looking. Um, so the Clippers play against the Bulls in a couple days, of course, without Paul George. We'll see what happens there. Uh, the Suns were kind of sputtering, and then they end up winning the game there. Uh, one, two, three feels kind of set. Everything else is not. Okay, C won a game against the Trailblazers, so they have a one-game difference between them and the Dallas Mavericks. Again, it's just so weird to see the Dallas Mavericks on this part of the, like, on this part is crazy, man. Pelicans have been playing some really good ball. And this is after I was seeing that they had went through the stretch where they were looking like the worst team in basketball. And they're allowing Brandon Ingram to be more of a facilitator and be more of a one. And a lot of that has been helping out. I mean, he had like a nine assist game, a 30-point triple-double with 10, assi uh, 10 assists and 10 rebounds with no turnovers. And the game after that was the Trey Murphy 10 plus three game. So like they putting it together right now, which is crucial because they felt like a team, the way they were playing two and a half weeks ago where they were going to be one of the teams that was going to be on the outside and now when they're saying Zion Williamson is starting to ramp up and he might be able to come back in a couple weeks I'm just saying the Pelicans might be able to make some noise again only time will tell though you never really can predict these things in the NBA and that's why we love it